Hey everybody, welcome back to Life Groups. It's 2019 and I truly believe we're going to have the best year yet in Roots. And I believe God is preparing us for something big that He wants to do in Roots and in Crossroads. Last Sunday we just started our two-week stressed series where we talked about how to deal with stress and how do we deal with stress. We talked about Martha and Mary. Martha was the busybody. She was the one that stressed about making sure her house and the preparations were all taken care of while her sister Mary sat at Jesus' feet. So when Martha had enough and couldn't handle anymore, she went to Jesus and said, Jesus, I've been working so hard. Tell Mary to help me. And Jesus responded, Mary has chosen what is best. And I know many of us struggle a lot with stress. We have so much that we are committed to and so little time to actually take care of our commitments, especially in Southern California where pace of life just seems so much faster than everywhere else. It's almost like we don't have any time to actually meet with people that are important to us because we're so busy and stressed about all the things we need to get done. Stress comes from busyness, but it also comes in seasons where things don't go as expected in our lives. We have stress after a loss of a loved one. We have stress when our parents are fighting or when they separate. We have stress when our friends blow us off and don't want to be our friend anymore. There are so many different ways of stress that gets built up in our lives. And when we start to become stressed, our mental, our emotional, our spiritual, and our physical health become weak. I know when my calendar is full and things aren't going the way that I want them to, I tend to break down. I usually only get sick after a very stressful season. That's why in college I always got sick after I took my finals. It wasn't a normal cold, but it was more of a stress cold. And I know many of you, you break down in stressful seasons as well. Some of you break down and get sick like I do. Some of you break down and cry. Some of you break down and just get extra irritable and grumpy. And I know we all wish stress would not be in our lives. I know most of you wouldn't complain if we could be on Christmas break for the rest of the year. But that's not realistic and it's not going to happen. So when you're in a stressful situation, what do you do? I think most of us run from our responsibilities when we're stressed. We don't want to deal with it. So we run to the TV, we go to the video games, or something to keep our mind off the things that are causing us stress. We don't want to do our homework because we're not sure we know how to do it correctly. So instead of getting help, we run from our problems. I think running from our stressful problems is our natural tendency. It seems like it's the easiest thing to do in the moment. But how many of us have ever run from a project because we didn't want to deal with the stress only for it to creep up on you the day before it's due and you then have created an even more stressful situation? And so today I want to look at two characters who were in stressful situations. In fact, it was so stressful that they were even in a life or death type situation. We will look at a story about Elijah and we will look at a story about Paul. And through these stories, we will learn by example what to do and what not to do in the midst of your stress. First, I want to start by showing my cards. I want to show what we need to be doing. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This verse doesn't say anything about running from your problems and they'll go away. This doesn't say to go to your coping mechanism that will make you feel better says to present, to give your request to God, and He will bring you peace. God needs to show up in your situation for you to get the peace that you need. Stop thinking that Jesus doesn't care when you're in a stressful situation. You start to offend God because you don't trust that He cares for your stressful situation. So many of us try to handle everything under our own control and say, Hey God, I'll I'll take it from here. When all God is wanting us to do is trust Him with our stressful situation. In the book of 1 Kings, we have the story of Elijah. Elijah is a prophet of the Lord. He hears from God and speaks to Israel what God wants them to hear. In 1 Kings 18, Elijah is one of the 
last prophets left and he is being sought after by King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. And God calls him to go to Mount Carmel where he will put God on display. So there are all these people who worship the idol Baal and they don't believe in the one true God. And Elijah challenges them. He says, hey guys, if you can build an altar and have it get set on fire without you bringing a flame to it, then you have the one true God. But if I do it, then my God is the one true God. So they agree. And they start to pray to their gods. They start to pray to Baal. And they start to cut themselves and they cry out loud, hoping their gods will set the fire to the altar. And nothing happens. I love it because Elijah even makes fun of them. But now it's Elijah's turn. He prays one simple prayer. And God strikes the altar with fire and proves that he's the one true God. It's a really cool story in uh, 1 Kings 18. And you would think Elijah would be on a huge high after that moment, but that's not what happened. Elijah has a meltdown. He runs away. He can't take it anymore. He's too afraid to be killed by Ahab and Jezebel. And in 1 Kings 19, verse 3 and 4, it says, Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. Then he went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors who have already died. Elijah was done. He had enough. He was stressed out to the point where he couldn't bear it no longer. Jezebel was coming after him and he was afraid and stressed out. He was so stressed that he ran away from the place that God actually called him to. But God wasn't done with him yet. So what happens next? 1 Kings 19, verse 5 and 7. says, Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, the angel touched him and told him, Get up and eat. He looked around and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, Get up and eat some more, or the journey ahead will be too much for you. An angel comes to him and tells him to get up and eat. And then he eats. Then it happens again. And why do you think God did this? Since Elijah was so stressed out, God wanted him to get proper rest and have proper food. But what do we do when we get stressed? We stay up late trying to make sure we study, study everything that we need to. We eat junk food that doesn't actually nourish our bodies. Junk food is like comfort food, but it doesn't really help us in the long run. When I was in school, I learned I did better on tests when I studied a little in the night, got a good night's sleep, and then studied a little in the morning. I did way better on those tests than when I tried to stay up late cramming and not getting enough sleep at all. Same when I'm preaching a sermon on Sunday mornings. If I'm all over the place, it's probably because I didn't get a proper night's sleep that night. And you know what helps you get good sleep? A proper diet. Junk food, soda, coffee, and anything sugar-based before bed can really mess up our sleep cycle. And when we don't sleep, we get all messed up. So when you're hungry, when you're angry, when you're weary, and when you're tired, this is all stress that causes you to make poor choices. These things cause you to go into sin. It causes you to run towards temporary things that you think will satisfy, but leaves you short of the feeling that you truly need. When we're stressed, we run to coping mechanisms that we think will make us feel better. These coping mechanisms are sin because they come before God in your life. So Elijah was running from his problems thinking they would just go away. But God was not done with Elijah yet. And right after this moment, God came to meet with Elijah. And why do you think God put Elijah through this? God is saying to Elijah that he needs to listen to God's voice and not Jezebel's. He needs to find God's peace and not fear from Jezebel. His voice is the one that matters in your time of stress, not other people's. So when we're stressed, we aren't supposed to go to the thing that makes us feel better. 
We're not supposed to run away from the stress and just go to a coping mechanism, but we're supposed to go to God first and receive his peace. Let's look at another character who also is in a close to death type of situation. Paul, who was a missionary for Jesus, became a prisoner because he was preaching the gospel too much. And they were doing a prisoner transfer and sailing the prisoners to Rome. And while they were sailing to Rome, Acts 27 verse 20 says, The terrible storm raged for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars until at last all hope was gone. They were realizing that they were coming to an end of their life. All hope was gone. Sounds eerily similar to Elijah's situation. But what did Elijah do? He ran away. He tried to run from his problems. But Paul, he didn't lose hope. In Acts 27, verse 22 and 25, Paul says, But take courage. None of you will lose your life, even though the ship will go down. For last night, an angel of God, to whom I belong and whom I serve, stood beside me, and he said, Don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. So take courage, for I believe God. It will be just as he said. Doesn't that sound like a man full of peace? Wouldn't you like to feel that way in in the most stressful situation of your life? What if you went to your next hard season in your life where your family isn't doing well and you sit there just fully at peace because you know God has your back in the end no matter what. That you know peace doesn't come from your circumstances. Peace comes from God. You can have messy circumstances and still be full of peace. And I want to go back to Philippians 4, 6, and 7, which says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Be anxious about nothing. Be stressed out about nothing. But in every situation, we pray to God and trust Him. And He will fill us with peace. If you're going to make it through all the stressful situations in your life, do your part of giving it to God and look to God for Him to show up. Because He will show up. So when you start to feel stressed, the first thing you need to do is not run away from your problems. The first thing isn't even taking care of the first thing on your to-do list. The first thing you need to do is give it to God. When you start to feel a stressful situation come on, say, God, I give it to you. And you allow Him to give you peace. Then you can start taking care of the things that you need to take care of. So let's pray. Father God, I just pray for... Anyone who's going into a stressful season, maybe it's finals coming up, maybe it's family life not going well, maybe it's a loss of a loved one. Just life just seems a little bit more stressful these days, God. I pray that you be with them and I pray that they don't try to just go to their coping mechanisms, they don't go to the things that make them feel better, but they just go to you, knowing that you're the one who can give them peace. So God, I just pray that As we talk about being stressed in life groups today, we talk about our stressful seasons in our life, God, I just pray that you uh, can break through and that you can help people just have a little bit more peace knowing that you are above everything. We love you so much, Jesus, and we thank you so much for these life groups. We thank you that we're back. We thank you for Christmas break. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Have a great life groups. We'll see you next week for our second week of Stressed.